Thank you for joining me today for Joy. Today on the program, we're going to be talking about overcoming depression and suicide. Depression is at an all-time high in our nation. And with everything that people just experienced with COVID, it is greater than ever before. Maybe today you feel in a deep, dark place of depression. Maybe you've even had suicidal thoughts. Well, today we're going to give you tips on how you can overcome. You know, sometimes we think if we had things greater in life or we had a better life or if we had this job or this position that we wouldn't be depressed or discouraged. Well, on the show today, we're going to be speaking with a young man who had it all. He had fame, he had riches, and yet he found himself victim to the sting of depression. And it downhill spiraled even to the place where he was considering suicide. No matter what you're facing today, God's got the power to turn it around, just like he did for our friend, Michael Copan. Michael Copan was a child star at the age of 17. He was a power ranger. And what this shows us is even superheroes need encouragement. Michael became a child star at the age of 17. While pursuing his dream, Michael would sleep in his truck and shower at the gym. Michael landed a role in the hit show, Power Rangers. It took 1,482 auditions before Michael landed the role on the drama series, One Tree Hill. Michael continued to play roles in various movies and television shows. Even though Michael had found success, he wasn't truly happy he struggled not to indulge in the buffet of the temptations of life. Michael dealt with depression and thoughts of suicide. Michael's life took a turn when he decided to return to his hometown and start his own production company. Now Michael works to positively impact the television and movie industry that shaped him in his young adult life. Michael's company is making a positive impact through family-friendly content based on biblical principles. He continues his acting career and stars in various television shows and movies. Overcoming depression and suicide. In the studio today on Joy, help me welcome Michael Copan. Michael, so glad to have you with us today. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, so people would think you have the perfect life. People look <laughs> at you now, think you have the perfect life, and you've never gone through anything. I wanna go back to when you were 17 and you became that star. Tell us about that. Well, um, so I had first convinced my mom and it took a lot of prayer. And then she let me go to Hollywood at 17 years old. I ended up living in my truck actually because the, the rental on the, the model apartment was like 600 a week. And it was coming out of my paychecks. So I said, it's, I need to save money. So I started living in my truck and then I was also showering at the gym. Um, and I just started in the business of modeling, and then um, I just hustled and hustled and hustled. And, but then, luckily, I got on my first gig, which was the uh, Power Rangers Time Force, and I became the Blue Ranger. So how old were you when you became the Blue Ranger? I was 17 when I booked it. They had to wait till I turned 18, so they oh. pushed production a whole month and, until November 13th, which is my birthday, until we could start filming. So I was 18. So you were living away from all of your family, you're actually in LA, in Hollywood, mm -hmm. doing this. Tell us about those years. Um, the years after Power Rangers? Well, you know, I got Power Rangers pretty luckily. I mean, it was my first audition, but after that I had four and a half years, 1,482 auditions I kept track of. I had a booklet. Every time I would audition, I would mark something I remembered of the casting director or something I did wrong or what I liked about what I did, just so I could improve myself. But four and a half years until I got on One Tree Hill, which still was a crazy opportunity to go model in China. I had a guaranteed three months, $80,000, and I, two days before I left, had an audition for One Tree Hill, and I decided to not go to China with the guaranteed money to stay for an audition for the casting director, not even for directors or producers, and ended up booking One Tree Hill, and that's literally the job that changed my career, but yeah, four and a half years of uh, couch surfing and struggling was is not fun. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, you know, I just, I can imagine that during all of that time that you're waiting, so you're on the Power Rangers, 
you're in the middle. How long were you a Power Ranger? Uh, we shot the show for one year. Okay. So, so right after 2001, the end of no, November 2001 is when the show ended. Um, and then that's when I was off to the races. And, you know, as Hollywood says, you're only as good as your last job. So that's literally the only thing I had to live on was mm -hmm. the last opportunity. And in those four years, I did, however, book That's So Raven. I was the Boys in Motion boy band, which became such a, a popular thing with social media today. But back then, it was just a one-day job. But other than that, that's the only thing I did for four and a half years. So in the middle of that time, that is when you began to get depressed and began to downhill spiral. You know, Hollywood, uh, and not just Hollywood, but life and circumstances, can set us up to feel like you, you go, one of my friends says you go from being a hero to feeling like a zero. Well, so tell us about that. Well, on the contrary, those four and a half years, I was walking straight. I was celibate. I was just living my life for God. I even told someone out in the in the green room, I turned down Jeepers Creepers. I booked it because I didn't want to curse. Mm. I turned down jobs. It wasn't until I got on One Tree Hill, which was a crazy situation because my my character come, comes out of a pool naked and I, I'm a sex heartthrob. And I had to sit with my ministers, my preacher at the time, and he had said, Mike, God had shown me that this is just a step to a step. Although as a pastor, I should tell you, you're probably not to do this because you're going to lead uh, yeah. people astray. But at the same time, he had a vision that this was going to be a platform to something bigger. But it was after I got One Tree Hill okay. that I started going through the depression. And I started going through it because of the, the, the pressures of fame, the pressures of the temptations coming my way, and my own self like not knowing how to deal with uh, falling into temptation. Um, it's kind of like when you, like you're working out for a good month and then you stop for a month and you gain weight again, you get depressed and some people fall into an even deeper depression and gain hundreds of pounds because they messed up that one month. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's, that's where it like kind of stuck with me for a good four and a half years. I call that the cookie cycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're depressed, so you eat a cookie, yeah. but then you gain weight and you're more depressed, so you eat five more cookies. Yeah, exactly. You break <laughs> wow. the well, maybe today you feel that you're in that place and maybe you're stuck in this cycle and you feel yourself downhill spiring to depression. Can I tell you that God is the answer? It's not about anything happening around us or not happening around us that defines our identity. God loves you today and he wants you to know who you are in Christ. If you need prayer, we want to pray with you. Pick up your phone and give us a call, 757-420-2625. God loves you, and you're going to get out of this place. So you got out of this place. You got out of that place of depression. Before that, it downhill spiraled where you had suicidal thoughts. Tell us about that. Well, so so after I got on One Tree Hill, I was making 40000 a week, and then I got movies where I was making two hundred grand a movie. So I had made over a million dollars at, at a young age of 25 years old, um, not knowing what to do with that money, <laughs> spending it on clothes, parties, the whole thing. I was going out to every event. Uh, that led to that depression and, and that pressure because I knew what God really had called me to do, and it wasn't that lifestyle. Um, the 08 crash woke me up, so I had lost all my properties. I had to short sell everything. And God took me rock bottom. I, mm. I'm back now sleeping on someone's couch in 2009, 10. And by 2011, mom said, come home. Mm. And it was the best thing I ever did was take the last bit of money I had. And I came home. And then I started, I actually, the first three months, I sat at home and did nothing. I went mm. camping. I hung out with the family. But then I opened up my own production company. Well, we want to talk about that. Yeah. We want to talk about that in a, in a minute. But, you know, I believe that... It's just like I said, people look at you and think that you have it all together and none of us really have it all together. So in the midst of that, you called on the name of the Lord yeah. because you had the root. So tell us about that experience. Well, you know, sometimes when you're faced with, when you're, you're back at rock bottom, um, see, God had taken me, when he said move home, I always tell people this, when you're in the woods, every tree looks the same. It doesn't matter where you're looking, left, right. But when you go on top of the mountaintop, you can see the whole plain, the whole field. And you can see that, oh, there's a fire going there. There's a swamp over there. There's some wolves and lions over there and some snakes over here. You can see everything from afar. So me moving back to Virginia was a wake-up call because when you're in 
the middle of it, you can't see it. You cannot, you have to yes. pull back. Yes. And even in great situations, people retreat. Retreating mm -hmm. is not weakness. Retreating is being strategic. Mm. So sometimes that's what I needed to do and realize how not to indulge in the, you know, the buffet of the temptations of life. Things are given to me for free. Things were coming at me. And it doesn't mean it's healthy for me to eat as much as I can eat because I'll get diseases. I'll get fat and sick and you know, my health will go astray. So mentally and spiritually, that's what was happening to me. Yes. Just because people were giving me free clothes, free this, free that, free parties, free whatever, it doesn't mean I should indulge in that. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't see that until I backed away and went on top of the mountaintop with Jesus and saw what I needed to see. And that's what changed my whole life. Wow. Well, maybe today you've been raised in church. You've been raised in the word of God and you find yourself at that place that Michael found himself, that where you just drifted away. I love what Michael said. You have to step back. You have to take a step back so you can clearly see. God wants you to break free out of the place of depression and suicide. You know, suicide is a spirit, but you have power and authority over that. If you need prayer today, if you've never accepted Jesus, or you need to rededicate your life, give us a call, 757-420-2625. We want to pray for you. Today's the day for you to break free, breaking free from depression, breaking free from suicidal thoughts, breaking free from all of the temptations that are surrounding you. And as you break free, you can step into all that God has for you. Again, give us a call, 757 420 2625. God wants you to break free. We'll be right back after this break. God wants you to break free from everything that's hindering you, and He wants you to come into your next season with victory. What's holding you back today? Fear? Discouragement? Addictions? Financial bondage? Whatever you are dealing with, God wants you to be encouraged not to quit in the pit. But know that God has the power to turn your situation around. For a ministry gift of $35 or more, you can receive Danette's new 45-day devotional, Break Free, and best-selling book, Don't quit in the pit. This special package offer will help you step into your season of victory. Order today by calling 757-420-2625 or order online from our e-store at DanetteCrawford.com. You can also write us at Danette Crawford Ministries, P.O. Box 65036, Virginia Beach, Virginia 23467. Order today. Today is your day to break free, to break free and overcome depression, suicidal thoughts, everything that you may be facing, God wants to turn it around. So Michael, you said that you were dealing with those suicidal thoughts and you just shared with me some of the root of that. Share it with us. Yeah, so when I was, uh, when I was 12 years old, my stepfather who raised me committed suicide um, and it really shocked my whole family and my whole world. Uh, for me though, it did give me a sense of like, I only have one life to live. And I think that's what catapulted me into wanting to do something big like move to LA. But in the midst of my success and going through that, when, when all f came down on me, it's funny, Hollywood will be like, Michael, 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 taking pictures of you. And then the minute you're not the hot thing, they're like, Michael, move so I can get a picture of that person. So I became not important. And that kind of took, put me in an isolated state and, and that's what led to my depression and, and, and everything I was going through led to more suicidal thoughts. And I, I've read that people that have gone through suicide with their family oftentimes think about it a lot easier because it, it, it's so, it hits home to them. Yes. Um, and that was that moment when my mom said, come home, because I was only able to share those, you know, those thoughts with my mom. And she was like, Michael, come home now. Amen. And, and that's literally what what um, what brought me back to praise God. Yeah. Well, you know, suicide is a spirit. It's it is a spirit, and people don't understand it because we live in the natural. But just like rejection, I had a major rejection issue, and I I don't know if you know this, but I was very suicidal in high school. My boyfriend committed suicide, and uh, while while I was growing up, my mom attempted suicide. Thank God she didn't. But that spirit, it's like an atmosphere. So if people aren't used to hearing that word, it's like the atmosphere that you're in. 
can settle upon you because your atmosphere affects you. And so I went through a dark time and it was when I was 17, when I was 16 years old, and then I got saved at the age of 17 and God brought me out of that. What would you say to somebody today that's just struggling with those suicidal thoughts that they feel isolated and alone? They feel that life has just tossed them aside like Hollywood did for you in that season. Well, I look at it like this, um, what you're not focused on at the time because at that time you're being selfish and I was being selfish at the time. Um, but when, when you're feeling the way you're feeling, I always tell someone, if you do commit suicide, imagine giving that feeling to 20 other people that you mm, care about. That's good. Because it, good it's point. like it spreads, negative spreads wow. like mold. It's just wow. like, and it, it goes out wow. and it, it attacks others. So you might think it might cure your problem because you're lazy to fix the issue or face the issue, but you gotta face that fear because mm. fear and faith cannot live in the same bubble. Wow. You have to push one or the other out. And that's what I had to realize moving home. I realized I had to push fear out because I needed faith to be prep, you know, prominent in my life. Um, and, and, and knowing just to say, hey, don't give up, don't give up because right. you will, you're, you're basically hurting or killing other people if mm. you do kill yourself. Mm. Wow, I just believe by the Spirit of the Lord that that is really a word for many of you today where you're feeling depressed and you are thinking about yourself and yet yeah, the pain is great. Jesus wants you to bring your pain to Him, but He doesn't want you to instill pain on others because there's so many people that love you. Pick up your phone, call us, let us pray for you, 757-420-2625. You're not alone. You're going to come through this. The darkness that you feel, the depression that you feel, it's going to turn around if you call on the name of Jesus. He will bring you through. Call on the name of Jesus. You know, I just, I love what God has done for you. I love how God has turned things around in your life and set you on a course. So it seemed like it was downhill spiraling, spiraling and you left. Did you feel like a failure? I can imagine, you know, the enemy just lies. You failed. You have to move home. Those are a bunch of lies to keep you from breaking free. Oh yeah. Tell me about it. Oh man, it was, yeah. And then even when you're trying to make way, I had people here, uh, you know, that was getting into real estate and ladies calling me a has-been and people are just attacking me um, from all angles. And the, the, the enemy wants to keep you down. Mm -hmm. He wants to say you're a failure, you're nothing. But you know, one thing I want to encourage everyone, the God who created us also created us to be creators mm -hmm. of our own world and our own destiny. So when I started creating my own stories, that's what really gave me the purpose again. Wow. What led me back to the reason why I went to Hollywood, which was not to be an actor or a model, but to be a light in the darkness, to be a missionary Come in on. the business. Come on, tell so, it. So therefore, that whole circle just came around. And now my first project was this anti-bullying, anti-suicide project. Because I had came over depression and suicide, mm. I wanted to build this IME project. And it was really built off this Einstein quote that says, Everyone's a genius, but if you judge a fish for its ability to climb a tree, the fish will spend its whole life thinking it's an idiot. Wow. So you can't, as a, you gotta know what animal you are. Mm. You, know, you know your strengths and weaknesses. So if you're a fish, don't envy the lion. If you're a lion, don't envy the bird. Because if you are the bird, if you're the frog and the bird is flying around, he could get shot by hunters, but you can dive into the uh, waters wow. and, and hide. So every ha animal has your own strengths. I am me shows you like what you are, accept who you are, but know what your weaknesses are and then lift those weaknesses through Jesus and through your friends. Mm, that so. is so good. That yeah. is so good. Today, you've got to know who you are in Christ. I had to learn who I was in Christ. And that comes from reading the word. Every show I do, I keep my Bible right here because the word of God is the truth and the truth sets us free. Let us pray for you today, 757-420-2625. 
You have great things ahead. The enemy wants to take you out. The reason he's lying to you and telling you you're a has-been is because your greatest days are ahead. I love it. I love what God has done in your life. And you know, one of my favorite that you do now, you are one of those handsome young men that are on all of the Hallmark Christmas movies. So you're doing your own projects and you're doing that. Tell us about how is it to be on those Hallmark Christmas movies? Well, now it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. And it's now's the time where me leaving Hollywood, I realized that Hollywood had the keys to just distribution for so many years, but now God's taking it back. Come on. We are a direct connection to our consumers and to the audience. Just like The Chosen has done so amazing with, they have an app where you can donate and you can watch their entire series, right? So that's what led me to going, hey, I don't have to be in Hollywood anymore. I can create my own content, give it to the consumers, and I don't have to bend and move to the, to the roles that are coming my way. I can create the roles that I feel comfortable you know, being in. Uh, so I do Christmas movies like Hallmark movies. Uh, that that was a great response from the audience. And then my wife and I, we're building a faith-based production company here. So we're doing all type of Hallmark movies. Our focus is going to be Hallmark style or movies like A Walk to Remember or mm -hmm. The Notebook, love stories, um, and Christian, but adding a Christian element to it. Actually, the first one I'm doing is a adaptation of my Power Ranger character, which wow. instead of using Zeus and Hades, I use the God and Lucifer himself. Himself Amen. as the bad guy, Amen. and that he was converting people into demons mm. into this. And why not have God, mm. the God of all gods, mm. give me the power? Mm. And it's not, and it's the power of the light, the power of the sun, the power of electricity and lightning to be able to, to, to destroy this enemy that's coming my way. So I want to go back to the, your beautiful bride, Victoria. Yeah. And I want to, I want you, because I know this story. I, I'm sure I don't know it all, but I love it. And so, you know, you waited, you felt like you were waiting and waiting and waiting. And usually the girls are the ones that feel like they're waiting and they're waiting. And then God did it. So I want you to talk to us about things that you went through as you were really waiting, you know, yeah. waiting to, to be married. And tell us about all that. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, you, when you meet the right girl, uh, sometimes you know, when we got engaged, uh, timing was just off in terms of <laughs> when we were going to get married uh, because that year w there was a hurricane that happened during that wedding. And then we, we felt called to go to L.A., so we pushed our wedding another year. But we ended up just getting married this past Aww. year. But waiting for the right moment, is, it, but it was a glorious moment because wow. all of her family and my family were able to be wow. there. We, we overcame so many demons and things that were coming our way. And it was such a blessed moment and one of the best days of my life. It is the Aww. best day uh, of my life uh, thus far. And it was just a great experience. And, you know, waiting all this time yes. in life through all the relationships I've been through in the past till now, when you do find true love, it's, it's, it's the best feeling ever. Wow. And she's my best friend Aww. and everything. Yeah. Well, I remember we were having lunch, you and I and Victoria, we were having lunch here in town center and she's like, Oh, I got to go. I got to go. And so we continued lunch and she left. I was like, where are you going? Her last fitting for the wedding dress. I was yeah. like, you better go girl. <laughs> yeah. It is amazing. Well, can I tell you today, God has so many amazing things for you. I'm so glad that Michael didn't quit in the pit. I'm so glad that Michael allowed God to set him free and for him to break free out of that place of depression, discouragement, and suicide. And he waited. He waited for God's best. Can I tell you, God's best is always worth waiting for. If you need to accept Jesus into your life as your Savior, I want you just to say this with me. Say, Jesus, I know that you're the Son of God and that you died on the cross for me to be forgiven of all my sin. Lord, come into my heart right now as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer like I did at the age of 17, I want you to call us, 757-420-2625, and get a copy of my book, Break Free. God wants you to break free and stay free. It's a 45-day devotional that's going to be life-changing for you. You know, at the age of 17, I gave my life to Jesus. I became born again. I believed in God before that, but I wasn't born again. But that's the day that I invited him into my life. And Jesus put the happy in my dance. What do you mean put the happy in my dance? He took away the depression, the discouragement. He took away the suicidal thoughts, and he put me on a path of victory. Let Jesus 
Put the happy in your dance today. It doesn't mean that you'll never have another problem, but it means that the one that solves all your problems is right there with you every day. Joy with Danette Crawford is changing the lives of single mothers and their children every day. Through the Father's House programs, we are not only providing housing for single moms facing homelessness, but we also offer mental health support, financial counseling, and seasonal assistance to thousands of mothers and children. Some of our programs include the Single Moms Life Group, the Bread of Life Feeding Program, Cars for Moms, and our annual Mother's Day celebration. We need your help to give a hand up to single moms and fatherless children who are facing devastating circumstances. Will you give your best gift today and help us meet the needs and bring hope? With your support, we can give help today and provide hope for tomorrow. Call us today at 757-420-2625 or go online to DanetteCrawford.com to give your very best gift. You can also write us at Danette Crawford Ministries, P.O. Box 65036, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 2346. With your help, we can continue to change the lives of single mothers and fatherless children every day. Joy Ministries annual Mother's Day celebration is all about recognizing single moms and widows. Each mother is honored with a special Mother's Day gift and a delicious meal. Our mothers come from all over the community. Some are from low-income housing areas, assisted living facilities, and various shelters. During this celebration, I give an inspiring message that imparts hope and encouragement as the gospel is shared. You've got people waiting on you and just making you feel special. And it's wonderful to come into this place and be honored. Well, I thank you from the bottom of my heart because you really made my Mother's Day very, very special. Since 2001, Joy Ministries has touched thousands of single moms and fatherless children. Will you please sponsor a single mom and her children for only $65? An entire table for $500 or for $2,500 invest in a whole neighborhood. Call today, 1-800-569-7112 and make a difference in the life of a single mom this Mother's Day.